Hi, and welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Dave, and I'm here with Jimmy from ClearScale. I know ClearScale is a system integrator, but you guys did a project for an interesting client. Yes, we did a project for a genomics uh, client, and the customers order genes from them. Wow, so like made to order? You made to order genes. Just like Amazon not, Prime, Not like right? these genes. No, no, the genes with a G, <laughs> got it, yeah, cool. Right. And uh, so they submit their jobs through like a website or something? Yeah, so you know, the first step of the process is the clients have particular gene sequences that they want to validate. Okay. And so they, they put all these gene sequences in through a website. It comes in through API Gateway. And these sequences are initially sent to Lambda for okay. some validation that all the fields are there, everything's yep. correct. Um, that metadata is stored in DynamoDB. Okay. as well as instructions on which algorithms to run. So job parameters and like the JSON blobs like Lambda and Dynamo, right? Yep. Okay, right. cool. Then what happens? And then the, the actual messages for processing get sent to SQS. Okay, so we drop them on a queue. Yep. And then... We drop in the queue. We have a couple of applications uh, always running here that are pulling SQS for messages. Okay, so, so just a few stay hot, but then uh, this is pretty spiky, though, isn't it? It is very spiky because a lot of these these calculations, when they submit, uh, average is one thousand requests. Okay. For, yeah. for one uh, sequence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So what happens here is we also have what we call a queue monitor. It's also running as a container service, mm -hmm. and it's actually monitoring the queue. And when we get to five hundred messages, we're spinning up additional. Uh, instances in, in ECS to handle that load. So we stand up those instances so they can process down the queue, and then like once we pare it down a little bit, do we scale back down? Yep. Once the queue starts clearing up, we start scaling that ECS infrastructure back down. Okay, cool. Yeah. So now you don't have to really like live at the peak, right? You know, you scale up for the peak in Dynamo and ECS, yep. and then tear it back down to save a little bit of money. Absolutely. And cool. so that brings up the second portion of it is we have a second queue monitor that's based on a dynamic DynamoDB application that's available on the AWS marketplace. Okay. That's watching DynamoDB for utilization. Once we hit 50% utilization, we're bumping the increments up for both reads and writes. Well, that's awesome. And then uh, how do the scientists get back the, the info that they need? So after we're, we're processing um, in ECS, we're actually uploading the results back into DynamoDB. Okay. And we have a Lambda function that's constantly pulling for completion of that sequence. And once it, the sequence is completed, it's making a call back to the website to notify their clients that, hey, your result set is in. Here's, you know, here's the difficulty rating of creating that, that gene sequence. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I, very, I, very cool. Yeah, I love how you made it very elastic and only pay for what you use. Yes. That's what we love at AWS. Yeah, so. it's especially because their workloads, they may only be at peak workload for 25, 30% of the day. Right. Well, scientists got to sleep, right? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming out today, and thanks for watching. This is my architecture.